Hey, what is going on? My name is Rubidium. Today we're looking at lights, the quality of the light, the softness of the light, and how you can get a good result out of almost any light as long as you know where to put it in relation to the subject. Maybe a couple of months ago now, uh, Matt Workman, who does the cinematography database videos, which are excellent, I really have learned a lot from watching them, and I love uh, what he's doing for the industry with his software and his uh, breakdowns. I watched one of his videos where he tried to explain how you could put a number or some kind of metric on the softness of a light. Um, so rather than talking in soft, hard, very soft, there was some kind of actual number or um, way to calculate the softness of a light. It was very technical. It kind of went over my head, but it got me to thinking about how, uh, as a photographer, I talk about light and how I start shooting, um, uh, start placing lights for my shoots. Well, maybe we should wind back a little bit. You know, light typically has three characteristics. It is the color, the brightness and the softness or the size. Um, and size is relative. So the sun is a incredibly large light source, but it's also very far away. So relative to the size of what you're filming, it's going to be pretty small and pretty harsh. It's going to give you, um, it's going to give you hard, uh, shadow lines on the face of your subject, make it look not, uh, that they're going to break up the, the lines of the person's face and make it not look as soft or as picturesque. Uh, as something that is much smaller than the sun, but is much closer to the subject. So I did, I set up this little test today and I looked at four of the lights that I use and tried to get the same level of softness from them. And I did this by putting the light the same distance from the subject as the size of the light. So I started off with, um, this tiny little light panel. It's pretty bright. It's, it's, uh, Oh, I blinded myself. Um, it's powered by the six um, AA batteries or one of these um, MP type Sony batteries in the back. Uh, um, it's probably a single stop, you know, one stop, full, full one stop diffusion. Uh, very, uh, unlike the uh, LED, the small LED panel, it kind of breaks up the, um, or breaks up the different LED lights a lot more and you get a nice, diffused shadow you can there's still a shadow it's not shadowless especially coming in from 45 degrees but um it's this was sort of like this is where i started from so but you know it isn't that practical to have a one foot led one foot from your talent um uh, because unless you're working on a super close-up um you're going to see it in the shot so moving up to the next level i had this two foot LED, the one that I have right here. Let me see if I can get it in frame. It's a fluorescent light. Um, I've got, there we go. Uh, it's about two and a half feet wide. Um, it's sort of like a mini cheap Kino flow. Uh, again, it's kind of old. Um, as a result, it also has a bit of a green cast to it. It's about five years old. Uh, I have a light grid cloth um, diffusion over the top of it. Sticking with my method, I placed this two foot, two and a half foot source, two and a half feet away on the same 45 degree angle from the clothes peg and got a pretty, pretty identical shadow to the one by one placed one foot away. Then uh, we moved on to the next light, which is my, uh, my light mat 2L, um, which is four feet wide, four feet long, I should say. Um, and has this sort of poly skirt and has a um, full stop diffusion on it. Uh, this is my go-to interview light. This is what I shot these uh, videos on. And uh, lo and behold, uh, it gets a more uh, angular shadow because it's only one foot high, but four feet long. It's the same size as a normal Kino flow. And then finally, I threw up a little, um, I guess in Australia, they call them T-bones. Um, it's a light stand, uh, with a C stand, um, knuckle on the top of it, uh, with a six foot metal pole from Home Depot in the top and, uh, half grid cloth hung over the top of it. And then a 350 watt tungsten light projected through it. Now this is a bigger source. I was able to place this six feet away from the subject. So this could have lit 
almost a conversation between two, uh, a two shot or a conversation between two people. It was far enough back now from the um, subject that there was some room to, to kind of move in. And in this, I got pretty much the same shadow. Obviously it's tungsten, so it's a different color and I've corrected for that. But I got a very, very similar shadow um, to the previous ones. So, I mean, this for me sort of made me understand why on big movie sets where they're shooting, you know, a fight scene or a, you know, um, a big uh, action scene happening, they need, you know, if they want to cover a, if they want to have the same quality of light on their subject, they need to have a 20 by 20 foot um, diffusion light source or they probably have the light sources behind lots of different light sources lighting up a 20 by 20, uh, but they need it to have it 20 feet away. Uh, so if you want something, if you want something half as soft as this, then you can pick, you can put a, a four foot uh, light source eight feet away. You can put a 10 foot light source 20 feet away. With this as your metric, then you can, you can scale up to make it softer and make the shadows totally invisible. Um, or you can scale down and make the shadows harder, but have uh, not need as, as big a source of light. And I think this is, um, for me, this is a really int- uh, good way of working. And I know that if I want something um, like you have here, where I have a two and a half foot source, two and a half feet away, 45 degrees to the side and 45 degrees up um, to give me this very soft, pleasing kind of um, cosmetic uh, shaping to my face, then I need to, and I want to do that on, you know, two people and I want, my shot is going to be uh, the, the object or the subject that I want to light is going to be two people. Then I'm going to need a six by six um, light source, six feet away. If that's too close and that's going to be in my shot, then I need a 12 by 12 light source. Suffice to say that uh, this is, for me, this is a really helpful, useful way of thinking about the softness of a light and uh, allows me to put into my calculations um, how big, how far, and how, um, and as a result, how bright a light source is going to need to be to illuminate the frame and give me the effect that I want. Hope that was helpful for somebody out there. I would, you know, this is by no means a um, you know, gospel. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, if you guys agree, let me know in the comments and I will see you next time.